Hi guys, uh, welcome back and welcome to second year of your oral health sciences course. I just want to take this opportunity to have a wee chat with you about audit and about the project that you're going to be doing as part of your second year. So in dental public health, which is a second year module, part of the assessment is to complete two cycles of an audit. Dental public health is a semester two module, however, the audit is quite a big project um, and it takes quite a long period of time so you do need to start this in in semester one hence why I'm talking to you about it just now. I'm aware that probably most of you if not all of you have not really had any experience of audit and you're perhaps not very sure what audit is so I'm just going to take some time first of all to talk to you about audit and then we can go more into the specifics of what specifically you're going to be doing. So Clinical audit is the process by which we assess whether what we're doing is aligned with best practice and current guidelines and standards. So it's what we call a cyclical process. It's a process that never really ends. We always want to make sure that we're doing best practice, whether that be for the benefit of our patients, the benefit of us as clinicians, or the benefit of the wider dental service, whether that be the health board that you work for or the general practice that you're within. So this flowchart here is a really good diagrammatic representation of what I was saying there about audit. So you can see, it's a cycle and the arrows all lead on from each other. There isn't specifically a clear start and stop point, but for the sake of what we're doing and for your audit project, we're going to start at the top where it says set standard. So whatever you choose to audit, it has to have a standard there for you to measure it against. Now, in some cases, you may be looking to set that standard yourself. That's way beyond what we're looking at here. What I want you to do is choose a standard um, against which you're going to measure current practice. And that is the next stage. Once you've decided what you're going to measure against, you then want to look and see what people are actually doing. Um, and there's lots of different ways you can measure best practice. And <clears throat> part of the audit project is you as a group thinking about the methods that you want to use and deciding which suits you best. And so that's the decision that you need to make, the methods by which you're going to measure current practice. Then once you've done your measurements and you've got your set of results, you know what's happening now. Now's the time when we want to compare current practice to the standards or guidelines that we're following and think, right, how well are we doing at meeting these guidelines? What were we aiming for? And how can we improve things to get closer to what we were aiming for? It really depends on what topic or what guideline it is that you're measuring as to whether you're looking for 100% compliance or maybe slightly less. It's a general rule, we wouldn't go for 100% compliance because is that realistic? However, there's something, say for example, infection control related issues that you would say, no, we need 100% compliance. So this stage here when it says reflect plan, change and implement change is arguably the most important part about audit. It's all very well as knowing what's going on and knowing what's meant to happen, but if we don't do anything to improve things, then the audit serves very little purpose. So once we've decided how we're going to make it better and we've implemented those changes, we then go back and we start the cycle again. So we re-audit. You want to have a wee bit of reflection here to think, am I actually using the right standards? But as long as you're using the right standards in the first place, we're going to go back to measure current practice. And current practice should have changed now. To reflect the changes that you put in place, you're then going to get a set of results, compare them, reflect, implement change, and so on and so on. Now, in theory, audit is a cyclical process, like I said, and it doesn't really have an end point, but obviously, for what you guys are doing, we do need to have an endpoint. And for you, it's two cycles. You're going to start off by choosing your standard measuring practice and reflecting and implementing change. And then you're going to do a second cycle where you do that again to make sure that the changes you have made have been effective. So this is just a very basic overview of what the process of audit is. People often get anxious or nervous about audit, they've heard these terms banded around, they've heard people talk about how it's difficult or it's boring. It's really not. The best audits are the simple ones. 
you'll find a wee bit more information online if you'd like. I've also placed a journal paper in the audit instructions area of Blackboard that talks about making the most of clinical audit and you can read through that as well. But to think about what you guys need to do now, like I said, this is quite a lengthy project and we need to get started. So the first thing that you need to do in your groups is choose what topic you want to audit. And this is really important. You're going to be working on this project for a year. You need to choose a topic that you are interested in. Otherwise, you're going to find this quite a tedious process. The best thing to audit is something that throughout first year you've noticed and it's annoyed you. You've thought, why don't people do that the way it's meant to be done? There's something that's occurred over and over again and it might seem like quite a little thing, but it's annoyed you. So why aren't people doing it and how can I make people do it? Or why am I not doing it myself, for example? So I want you to get together in your group and think about what topic you want to choose. Now, there are four groups in total. Um, you will notice that they are all spread across all three sites. What that means is you need to make sure that you've got a common theme running across your group. Obviously, you're all working on one topic, um, but the guidelines on which you base it may be multiple. So, for example, if you're looking at an infection control issue, um, you may find that you need to look at NHS Highland infection control policy, NHS West Nile infection control policy, and the NHS Dumfries and Galloway infection control policy. Now, they will all be very similar because there is a national policy on which they are based, but you need to think about those things. I want these audits to be across the three sites. There's a reason why you have been split up in the groups that you have been, and you need to be looking at data from all areas. So that's the very first thing that you need to do, and you need to do that quite soon. I'm going to go through a timeline with you now that talks about, that tells you what you need to do and when, and it is quite clear set dates as to what we're looking for. Okay, so I'm in the learning resources area on Blackboard now for Dental Public Health, and you'll notice there is a folder that says audit instructions, and this is all you're going to need for this semester. All the rest of the learning resources are for this semester too. So in here, you'll find this video that I'm making, but underneath is your list of groups and then your timeline. This is very important. You must stick to these dates. If you don't stick to these dates, there is a risk that we will miss other deadlines and therefore you will not be able to complete your audit. This audit is worth 25% of your whole module for general public health. If you don't submit your audit or you can't submit your audit because you haven't met the deadlines, you will fail the whole task and therefore quite likely fail the whole module. So it's very important that you are clear with these dates. So the first date to think about is the 14th of September. That is two weeks into the semester. Okay, that's why I'm telling you, you need to do this now. And that is to approach me and have your choice of topic approved. They will be done on a first come first serve basis. Two groups will not be permitted to do the same topic. So if you as a group have decided quite quickly on something you really want to do, come and ask. If somebody has already approached me and I've said yes, I will say no to the next group. So take time to think about it, but don't doddle with it. The next date is a few weeks later and that is Friday the 5th of October and that's for the submission of your proposal. There's quite a lot of information on Blackboard about your proposal, which I'll show you shortly, but your proposal is really essential. This is where you're coming to me as the module leader to say, this is the audit that we want to do. Okay, so the 14th of September is just to tell us this is what we want to audit. The proposal is the details of how you want to do it. This is really key. You'll see the next down here, I've got about completion of ethical paperwork by the 26th of October. So once I, as a module leader, have approved your proposal, I then have to put them to the university for ethical approval because it's sort of like a research project. So by the 26th of October, your audit proposals need to be submitted and approved by me and there are forms for you to fill in. 
if you haven't done that by the 26th of, September, of October and we miss that deadline, <clears throat> the university won't give you ethical approval. And this is one of these times where the entire group will get zero for this assessment. So this deadline is really important. Now, I am aware that you've never done an audit before. That's absolutely fine. So between the 5th of October and 26th of October, you'll notice I've said meeting for formative feedback. What we will do is you'll submit your proposals that you've worked on as a group. And then in the week beginning the 8th of October, I will meet with all of you, all of the groups, and we'll go through the proposal that you've submitted. And we'll have a talk about each individual section. And is it OK? Does it need a bit of work? How can you improve it? And then you've got a few more weeks to so go back as a group and discuss things until we need to get the ethical approval paperwork done. So there's lots of feedback going on in this process. We want you to produce the best possible audits you can, first of all, because obviously it will get you a good mark, but it also helps us improve our practice as a whole. It improves things for our patients, it improves things for our students, and it also improves things for our um, overarching health, board, health boards and governing bodies. So there will be lots of opportunity for you to ask me for help. Um, and the first one really is at that stage when we have our meeting. Then once your ethical approval paperwork is completed, you have all signed the appropriate forms, you can then go ahead and do your cycle one. You've got your proposal, you're just going to go through with what it says. And then you need to go through a full write up, which I'll show you shortly. And that deadline for submission is the 14th of December. So this is your full cycle one write up. So you've got quite a long time. You've got a good six, seven weeks between submitting your ethical approval paperwork and submitting your cycle one. Then we'll have another opportunity to get some feedback. Again, we'll do meetings as you come back after semester, uh, the start of semester two. And then for cycle two, I'm going to leave you a little bit more to your own devices um, because you'll have had quite a lot of assistance with cycle one. Now, I am still here to support you throughout this whole process. Just because it's not a week when we've got a meeting timetable doesn't mean you can't email me as a group and ask for assistance or if you've got a question, that's absolutely fine. But your formal points for getting feedback are um, these two weeks when we've got meetings arranged. And obviously, I'll give you specific dates and times near the time. These are all deadlines, OK? You can absolutely submit beforehand. For example, if you guys get your proposal done early, we could possibly have a meeting before the 8th of October. That's absolutely fine. Um, but the deadlines must be met. I will not chase you for these deadlines. If you don't meet them, I think I've explained the consequences quite well already. There are only two absolute formal sub submissions, one of which is your ethical approval and one of which is your final deadline for submission, which is uh, Easter of semester two. If you choose not to submit for feedback um, in time for the 14th of December, say for example, that is your problem and you won't receive feedback and then you'll have to just move on to cycle two without it. So you can obviously see why that would be fairly detrimental to, um, to your project. So please try and keep to these deadlines, but I'm not chasing you for it. I just want to show you a couple of other things now which will help you in particularly the run up to um, choosing your topic and your proposal. So Excel and Blackboard, we have a folder that talks about specifically the assignment. This document here is your proposal instructions. Um, it's basically a written version of what I've just said with a wee bit more information here. Um, what I've done is here is I've given you a list of potential topics that you can choose. These, this is not an exhaustive list and if you have another topic that you are thinking of doing then that's fine, please just email me and ask. There are circumstances where I will say no that's not a good topic and um, sometimes it's because it's ethically we wouldn't get approval for it. Other times it's because if you remember the whole point of audit is that we're trying to affect change and we're trying to get practice better. Some things are incredibly hard to change. So the classic example of that is fail to attend or late cancellations. It really annoys us all if a patient doesn't turn up for their appointment and you want to stop it happening. 
And you can certainly look and see how often people fail to attend. But how do you change that? It's really, really hard at the level of which you guys are at as students to affect a change there. So if it's something like that, I'm probably going to say, look, guys, I don't think you'll get the best experience of audit out of that. But I will try wherever possible to say, yeah, go for it. If you think that that's a topic that's appropriate to you, then do it. Because like I said, the more appropriate it is for you, the better you'll find it. Now, there are some details in here as to what you need to include in your proposal. Um, I'm going to let you read this yourself. Similarly, there is a document called How to Write an Audit, which goes into even more detail about what should be included in each section of your audit, whether it be the proposal or the full write-up. So take some time to read that before you submit, please. If you submit a proposal having not read what's supposed to be in it, I will just send it straight back to you and say you need to read your guidance first. I'm very, very comfortable with giving you feedback as long as you've taken on board the information that's already been given. So that really covers everything that I wanted to go over today with regards to the audit project. It probably seems a little bit daunting at the moment. You might feel like I'm asking you to do things that you, you don't have a good understanding of at the moment, and that's absolutely fine. This is about experiential learning. It's about getting on with it and asking for help as and when it's required. Please understand that the opportunities for formative feedback are there to be used. Marks will not be deducted because you asked for help. That's the whole point in the formative feedback process is to ask for help as and when you need it. So your first priority is to choose the topic. Like I said, the deadline is quite soon for that. It's two weeks into the semester and then we can go from there. Any problems, please just email me um, and we'll see how we go on.